Hey there guys, Gary Noden here for GenVFX. Another little tutorial for you now. It is a tutorial, it's not a one by one, because it, even though it kind of talks about one thing, it's not a modifier. So I'm going to call it a tutorial to make life a bit easier. And it's all about something which is inside of Render Blender <laughs> 2.93. Render 2.93. Um, <laughs> in this current release of Blender, there is something called Dynamic Sky. Now, um, I haven't seen, I've yet to find somewhere where it properly explains everything about it, and I probably won't cover everything, but I'm going to do the best I can uh, available to me to actually be able to give you the best usage of how to use Dynamic Sky. So I'm going to throw us right into the deep end here. You can see here I've got a very, very boring little thing that's a couple of arrays and some very bad modeling and uh, very bad shading. But the point is, uh, it's not about necessarily this bit, it's more about how it's going to look with the dynamic sky. So I wanted something which had sort of like an outdoor kind of feel because, but also had enough information in there that you can actually see kind of how the light works. So you can actually, I mean, you can tell straight away, this is EV, there's a little bit of like a watery sort of like substance here. It just popped up, went a bit weird. Um, oh, it's just me and it's not catching up with me, is it? Really, that's it. So, so what I'm going to do is, because basically, first and first and foremost, first and first and foremost, you notice there, because it's very much the first, first, firsty thing, firsty, firsty thing. Um, um, the first thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, Dynamics Guy is not an EV thing. It is a cycles thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this into the modeling window so it's um, uh, not not mucking about and I'm going to go over here to the uh, render settings over here and I'm going to change the render engine over from EV to cycles and I'm going to go into the shading menu just purely because you can see that's the EV setup there's that that's the EV setup and this is using neither the scene lights nor the scene world so let's put those on and let's just pop it across then to uh, the cycles render review thing and at the moment there's just a standard light and some shading Again, very simple. So what I'm going to do is I need to bring up the dynamic sky stuff, which is going to be here. So how do you bring up the dynamic sky? If it's there, it should be here. So I've got create. Ah, there's create dynamic sky. And I'm going to say, I'm going to click on the create thing. Now it says here, important point, the dynamic world could not be found in the world's data because I haven't made one yet. So I'm going to go create. And now it says here, please select the world named Dynamic 1 from the Properties world. And you think, Properties world, where's that? Where's Properties world? Well, this is your property editor, and this is the world. So if we look here at the moment, we've got um, our preview, and there's nothing really happening in there. We've got our surface, which is the background. And so we do I have to plug it into the, the color here, or is it in the strength? And you think, where does it go? Where does it go? I can't see where it goes you need to select the world named dynamic one from the properties world properties world is here so you can see there is world but if i click on that you can now see dynamic one and the moment you do that that changes everything that's going on in here you see it's not updating you notice know, put it back to that window now it's updating so straight away here now you can see all the controls that you have in this viewport now, I'm going to very quickly go through them by changing them, okay? Brightness, pretty evident. You've got value of one. That essentially is the maximum level brightness, okay? If I set that to point 0.1, what happens is that all of this, in a minute, will diminish down to a much darker tone. There you go. So that's kind of like, it's not a night sky. I mean, it could be, but it's still a proper global illumination sky that's been set up to work beautifully and it does work really well I'm gonna set that brightness back to one and then we've got shadow color saturation well again it depends very much on where your sunlight is of how your color and your shadow is but you can literally just go between zero which you'll see might just see under this ball here it should lose a little bit of the color there you go pretty much all of the color is gone from there in the shadows now if I put this back to one, watch again what happens. It puts all that color that you're getting from your sky color pretty much back into your whole scene. So you see the blue appear under here quite distinctly and all of the smaller contact areas where the light is bouncing around, you can see blue shadows appearing, which is exactly what you'd want. So, and to prove the point, let's change this sky color to green. So it's not exactly going to be conducive to anything on this planet, but it could be on another one. And there now you can see again, see in the sky color you can actually see the sky color and the clouds in here okay 
this basically is now the main color of your sky if i get rid of that shadow color saturation you will still see green but in your shadow bounces where you're getting less light and obviously obviously that means all of your green is gone so essentially by getting rid of the value of one from your shadow color saturation you're really losing any of the shadow bouncing gi global illumination green to vanish i'll put that all back in there we go what we're doing now is going to take that i'm going to put that back to like a corn flowery blue so it just feels a bit more human for the sake of argument and then if we look what happens over here in a bit i'm going to very quickly if i can i'm going to lift my view so i'm going to camera to view and let's bring this up and then tilt this down i want to be able to see our horizon line so here you can see the horizon line here now in the distance let's just move this up a little bit yep go back to create and there here we are now here's a horizon color which will be going off to around about here so i'm going to change it to something a bit more distinct let's change that to red so you'll be able to see roughly where this is and appreciate it on the grand scheme of things this will go red come on there you go so the horizon color is now red you can even look at it it's underneath so anything below the horizon will now be that red color the sky up the top it's still blue so if i bring this down here like this and let go you can see there's our blue sky and our red horizon and also you can see that it's affecting everything in all of our geometry as well which is beautiful it's really nice it's really nice i love it all of it is great so there we are that's 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 that pretty much distinctively what it doing exactly what it does which is great and now here we've got our cloud color so let me change that back to something a little bit more uh, associative with a horizon maybe something a little bit hazy a little bit orangey and again you'll see it change in all of here because of course this is the reason why i put these black reflective balls and so you'll actually see how it would work with those i could have made them silver quite frankly but we've got enough information here so we can see what's going on i'm going to change the cloud opacity from one to zero and it just gets rid of our clouds that's simple enough if i set that back to one so we bring them all the way back okay there we are and now do we increase the cloud density from 0.67 to 1. Now, the point of this is you will see the thickening up of the clouds in the sky. They are better when the value is higher, I think. So if I just move this down and then spin this around, you can see here, they're sort of, you've got to just, there's a nicer feel when there's a higher value. Um, and you do also get that kind of like, domic feel um which is okay I, I kind of i suppose it is kind of doing that because essentially it is creating a dome so if i just let's with those clouds let's put them back to point two and so you can see the difference they're quite strippy they're quite they're very much there but here you see they make them it, it's more wispy so if you bring this value down a bit more that should fill up more in the sky so you get even more of them so the smaller the value well it is kind of more cloud the larger the value is they are just solid individual clouds when you bring down the density what you're actually doing in essence is stretching the amount of variety from the dense down to where there's less dense so it's almost like if you lower the value down you get more clouds but you get a better you you get a nicer sort of like softer feel as they grade off into the sky so lower values are better i think so there you go and there's a lovely horizon again so let's push this back up so we can see our scene and the clouds and i'm going to talk about the sun in fact let me just alter this a little bit more because this is the funny thing this is the one that seems to cause a few problems i found a lot of problems with it initially because i couldn't get my head around it and then all of a sudden i just went ah -ha, ah -ha. and i suddenly got it now i'm very quickly going to turn off our main light so the only light coming in now is coming in from this now we have a sun value so we can change the value of the sun because there actually is a sun in here this is the thing if i can let me just if i can just move this around 
it's not updating for ah, there we go right okay if we let's just see if we can find it and here somewhere is a sun now where it is is the interesting thing because it's the middle of the day when it's completely visible from the front and i'll explain why in a second the sun there it is is at the top right there and this is where I started having issues because I thought to myself when I looked at this sphere that when the light was at the top it was at the top when the light is at the bottom it was at the bottom and when the light is facing directly at you well it means it's coming from the front no and, then, <laughs> and this is where you kind of really have to think about things in terms of x y and z or z whichever way whichever you prefer it and that's because at the moment this and with the really way to tell is by looking at the shadows under here this is from the top so the light is you it's as if you're looking down not at the front so i it, it once it clicked it was dead easy i say i want my shadows to go this way well this is the front axis along here this so this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis this way, and up and down is the z-axis. So I'm looking directly down, so that, where I'm looking at that, that's the z. So if I want the shadow over here, I need to move the sun to be coming from this direction, like that. Wait for it, wait for it. Watch, watch, there you go. And the shadows are now going across this way, from left to right. And then I was like, oh, I see. I get it now. You can see where the light is coming from. So if I move this all the way to here, across this side, the light is now coming from the right of my scene. So this will all be brightly lit. It'll be darker away from us. Bear with. There you go. So you can now see the sun is now being reflected in this side of these onyx style balls. The light's now coming from over at the right. And if you really want to make it feel like it's properly lit, but still coming from the right, angle it a bit more. So bringing it this way more, we'll put it higher. And the shadows, which you can see stretching over there at the moment, will kind of still be there, but they'll probably be more top down. So now you can see the sun is now reflecting from a higher point. And the moment that hit, and I've worked that out, that was like, yes, that's it. Now, at the moment, the sun value was set to one. So I'm going to set that to five, which basically is making our sun five times brighter or bigger. It's making it inexorably bigger and it's totally wrong. However, if you do want to make your scene very, very harsh in terms of its hardness and the light, don't make it any higher than about 1.5. That will probably be enough to be almost nuclear. That really is just like the end of the world. But this is a way of basically building up the amount of light. Now, what well, the best thing about this, of course, is you've got nice hard shadows. You can see nice hard shadows. They're softening at the edges a little bit more because they're further away, which is exactly what would happen because of course, it's a realistic renderer. So I'm gonna set that with some value back to one and wait till this. In fact, no, I will put it back to 1.5 because we'll be able to see it better with 1.5. You can't see it quite as well with one, but you'll definitely see it with 1.5. So wait till that's back. All right, now here we have our soft and hard value. Now, because it's set to one, you do get a lot of hardness closer to source, but as you get further away, it does get softer. So what I'm gonna do here is gonna put the softness value down to 0.25 hardness value sorry the soft hard so basically what this is doing this makes it a softer light and as such you do end up getting a softer feel on the shadow it adds a, just a little bit more it's almost as if the sun's coming through a very small patina of cloud um so let's make that right the way down to the bottom and hopefully you'll be able to see a bit more distinctly that there's softer shadows a bit with yeah there we go I'm definitely a softer there. there you go so you can see there's a much much broader softness to the shadow 
but it is that's that's I mean you can see how too bright that is in fact you can see that it's not actually this is the sun value it's think of it more as uh, the sun value is like a scale of the sunlight itself almost as if the sun is bigger and then if you wanted to you can bring it down with the brightness but uh, no quite frankly one seems to work really nicely and uh, I'm gonna put that soft hard back up mm, maybe maybe leave it about there no no, I won't. I'm going to put it out back to one. So they're a bit more like they should be nice, solid, hard shadows. So that basically, basically, that is how you use this. Um, and of course, it's physically correct. So you end up with a physically correct lighting model. Um, in all honesty, it's brilliant. Uh, I really do love it. That's me lighting it from the front. And there you go. Now you can see the shadows are going that way. It, it's, as I say, it's it's solid. Um, I'm actually going to angle this slightly differently. So we're looking down here a bit more. And let's just lift it across this way a tad. And I'm going to render a frame. And there you go. There's a fully rendered image using the dynamic sky. It took seven and a half minutes for an image that is 720p, uh, which is 1280 by 720 and um you know but that's i haven't got the fastest machine in the world at the moment and um it's still managing to do the job so i'm not going to complain so anyway there you go this is how you use dynamic sky um it actually is it's actually you know really really good i mean if you just have a ball on the floor you know and nothing else you can test that till your heart's content and find out exactly what everything does i have actually just gone through everything um but yeah you know have a go have a play See what you can accomplish. You're all brilliant. You can do all sorts of stuff. Anyway, you take care of yourselves, everybody. Um, I will speak to you all soon. And just subscribe. Subscribe. They're every week. Why not? It doesn't hurt. It takes no time. Listen, guys, take care of yourselves. And, uh, yeah, speak to you next time. Bye. <laughs>